In this video, we'll be creating an interactive PDF document. By adding the PDF input controls to our document, we can create a final publication that acts as a template that users can fill out before printing. So let's get started. Welcome to class. In this video, we'll be taking one of our previously created RPG character sheets and turning it into an interactive PDF. We'll start by opening our document. So from the New Document Wizard, we'll select Open Recent Document and select the new document we want from the list. Now one of the first things we'll do is open up the Layers Control Panel if we don't already have it open. We can do this from the standard menu by selecting Windows and then Layers, or with the keyboard shortcut by pressing the F6 key on the keyboard. In our document, you'll notice that we went ahead and split the different types of content in our layout into different layers. As you can see, we have three layers, background image, frames, and labels. Now, doing this helps to ensure that when we select a layer to work on, we're not interfering with elements from another layer. As you can see, this document has text frames on top of shape frames and all of that on top of image frames. Without layers, moving elements around can get a bit challenging. So instead of picking an existing layer and adding our interactive PDF elements, let's go ahead and add one more layer. And let's give it a descriptive name, maybe PDF or PDF Elements. And then we'll make sure we have the new layer selected. Now let's go ahead and start adding PDF Elements to our document. Starting at the top left of our document, you'll see we have a banner and a handful of labels that denote our character's level, class, name, and background. And within the Scribus shortcut ribbon, you can see we have options to create buttons, checkboxes, text fields, drop down lists, and a few other interactive elements in the PDF tools section. If you don't see this section in your shortcut ribbon, right click on the ribbon and make sure the PDF tools option is checked. For our character sheet, we'll be focusing on adding text fields and even take a look at adding a drop-down list. We'll start by clicking on the PDF text field button and drawing a rectangle in our layout where we want the field to be, just like we would with a standard text field. And we'll place it just over the label indicating our character's level. Now we'll duplicate this field a couple of times for the character name, alignment, and race. In addition to allowing users to enter text, the PDF frames allow you to implement various degrees of input validation. So if you want the user to enter numbers or alpha characters only, this is something that can be configured. Let's double click on our new PDF text field to open the field properties window. As you can see from the top, you can select the field type set the field's name, provide a tooltip, or select from the various tabs and set other options. For this field, we'll select the Format tab and select Number from the dropdown. This will ensure the user is only able to enter numeric values in this field. Then we'll select the Validate tab. On this tab, we'll select the second option and enter 1 in the first field and 999 in the second. This will provide basic validation, preventing the user from entering the value that is invalid because it is either too low or too high. If you think about it, we wouldn't want to create a new character with a level of, let's say, negative 10. Yikes. Now for the background label. We'll make our way back up to the shortcut ribbon again 
and this time we'll select the PDF combo box. And just like the PDF text field, we'll draw this frame on the document but just above the background label and set our font properties. Now the combo box gives the user the ability to select from a list of options. So in order to identify the list of options in Scribus, we'll right click on the combo box and select content and then edit with story editor. We should now see the story editor open. Within the story editor, we'll enter our list of options with each option on its own line. When we're all done, we can close the story editor by pressing the checkbox in the shortcut ribbon. You should now see that the combo box is displaying the first option in the list. You may have noticed the borders around each PDF field. And yes, these will be present and in the final document, and they will get printed, but we can remove them. We can do this by double clicking on the field and setting the border color to none. Let's go ahead and do that to each of our new fields because we have our own design and we don't really need a strange rectangle box showing up when we print our document. Now let's go ahead and save our document and then we'll export it to a PDF. We can do this from the standard menu by selecting File, Export, and Save as PDF. We should be greeted with the standard pre-flight verification checklist identifying any issues Scribus has found with the document. Some of these issues can be significant, others may be inconsequential based on what you're trying to accomplish. When you're comfortable with the results, press OK. You should now see the Save as PDF screen. For the most part, the default options can remain the same. However, we'll be changing the file name and changing the compatibility to PDF 1.6 before pressing save. And that's about it. Now let's head over to our newly created PDF document and enter a few values into the fields before printing. In this video, we discussed adding interactive PDF controls to our document layout and how to save your PDF document to enable the controls. If this video helped you or you would like to have us cover a specific topic in Scribus, let us know in the comments section. See you in the next one.